In the classroom, it's sort of common to view math as sort of a permanent inborn thing. And the assumption is that the only thing you can change is the amount of knowledge that a student has. That you can teach new formulas and you can teach new approaches, but this thing called the math skill, the math ability, is something that's inborn and unchangeable. And what I try to do and what I talk about in the book is how really any parent can start to change that sort of inborn, what's considered to be inborn, uh, math ability. Do children get this math anxiety once they get into the classroom uh, or is it something that uh, a parent may have transmitted or I guess basically what I'm asking all children pre-k when they go into that classroom the first time are they at the same level? Uh, no not at all. I mean mm -hmm. I think I think that that the math anxiety that a lot of students have comes from the fact that they're in a classroom where some people are slightly ahead and some people are slightly behind but if a student finds himself at the bottom of a class, even, it's, even if it's by a very small amount, they really develop a feeling like they're way at the bottom, that they're way in the back, and that really develops some of that so anxiety. It's perception it's more really so than even the reality. It's much more perception. The difference between the top math students in a class and the bottom math students in a class is a lot less than what people think. Now, I've read that this really is appealing to parents who homeschool their mm -hmm. children. We're talking about a smaller setting, we're talking about a select group of children, one parent, a one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. almost. Does this work well easily in a classroom where you have children from so many different backgrounds and varied, uh, you know, backgrounds when it comes to math? Um, yeah, I mean, there's certain cognitive principles that are universal. Whether you're talking about a one-on-one -on -one setting or an entire classroom setting, there's certain things that you need to keep in mind. Um, some of those are, for example, that every student needs to have a really strong found, a foundation in the basics. So a problem in the basics is always going to be much more problematic. Um, some of the things that the book talks about is, is ways that, whether you're in a classroom setting or whether you're in, in, in an individual setting, you can really develop some of those key skills. You talk about the Asian system. What is that? Uh, the Asian system is built on memorizing fundamentals and really drilling those fundamentals. Uh, if I was going to use an analogy to athletics, the Asian system would be something that would really sort of develop your, you know, your running ability or your f physical strength through weightlifting or something like that. It really focuses intensely on those fundamental things, uses, it, uses a lot of drilling, uh, uses a lot of practice and really make sure that students are really fast and really ready to do every kind of basic problem type. And I think one thing before we go, some of the reasons why parents say this is why you need to learn math, mm -hmm. because, you know, okay, I just need to add, subtract, divide, sure. maybe multiply. And you say some of the reasons we give to our children are more turn-offs than turn-on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's very true. I mean, when you tell a student that he needs to study math, to calculate the tip in a restaurant, that sure doesn't tell you why you need to study algebra or calculus. Mm -hmm. And when you say that you need to math to build a satellite, well, I mean, most people don't build satellites. So I think what I, what I, what I try to convey is that math is sort of a, uh, is something that develops a really deep-seated thinking ability. It develops your logical reasoning. It develops your spatial reasoning, your problem-solving ability. And that's something that applies, that anybody can apply to, you know, a whole host of different situations. Uh, we do have to go, but we had the producers of the CBS show Numbers on. And they said teachers of math uh, were so happy to have that show on because it put math in a sexier, more exciting light for students who never thought that math was really interesting. Mm -hmm. So thank you for talking about it and how to increase the excellence of any student.